Hi everyone. So to introduce this video, I'm going to make a quick shout out to Alex in the comments section of HH04, the configured desktop analytics video, because they pointed out that essentially I'd not done uh, part two for this video, even though it was recorded a couple of months ago. So what I need to do is finish this off and, and do this do this this final part two. I honestly forgot about it, so apologies for that. Uh, I, but I have I've obviously picked that up now, so let's do it. So if we head over to our desktop analytics portal, which, by the way, the only way I can find to get to the desktop analytics portal is to either Google for desktop analytics portal or to go to aka.ms slash desktop analytics. So we'll do that now. And then from here, this looks a little different to what it did when we were looking through desktop analytics originally because it hadn't hadn't sort of analyzed all that data so now we've got to see what it's what it's done so we've got two devices i've only enrolled two devices into config manager through this so that's probably why that's there they're both in service thankfully they, they could be near end of service or end or end of service or even not measured but thankfully they're in service so we've got two enrolled devices and 114 apps we'll take a look at those in a minute and i created a deployment plan earlier on while i was messing around in this portal to see if it was worth making a video on this topic. So firstly, we'll look at the devices. And yep, yeah, so there, there they are. So that's the name, that's the version. I've got 21H1 that I created fairly recently uh, that I'm using for, for, for demonstrations and stuff. Um, they, they're showing that they've got a, a Xeon CPU. That's the server that I'm running them on. They're, they're virtual machines, so it's picked up the, the CPU from the server and six gig of RAM because I'm cheap. Um, f I have a, a, an apps section here, so if we click on apps, we have 95 apps, and all of them are noteworthy. That's good. 114 app versions, uh, one of them is important, 101 are not important, and 12 are not reviewed. Now I will say, I haven't installed any apps on these machines, so the fact that there are 95 noteworthy apps is a little bit concerning. Thankfully, it says... The majority of them are not important, and I would agree with that. So, uh, look, so I can turn the app version details on or off. That did indeed turn the app version details on and off, so I've quite, maybe. So I've got a version there of Microsoft Update uh, 28100. If I turn it on, I get 28100. Good. It seems to. It seems to. I don't know what it does. Edge. Oh, I see. It, it amalgamates these. So. Where I've got two different versions of the same app, it will combine them into multiple and reduce the size of this list. Isn't that great? That's very clever. Okay, so we've done that. So it's its importance is not reviewed, which is a shame uh, for Microsoft Edge. VLC is important. I would agree. Use it a lot. Uh, and that's the version that I installed. Look at that. That's great. Good. Okay. So let's click on it. And I agree. Yeah. Okay. So it is important. All right. So that's it. That's kind of all we can do. We can set the importance and set the owner. I assume that's a free text field, not a look up in Azure AD or anything, yeah, okay. Good. That's, yeah, that's lovely. Um, right, so that's, looks like that's it for the assets section. If I go to the feature update section, okay, so we've, we're have we in service again, that's lovely. Um, the latest device is this one here, that's correct. And then none of them are end of service, great. And we can see that I had 100% 20H2 and then I upgraded one to 20H1. You'll you'll have seen that in a video if you if you're following the channel. Um, yeah, I did that. That was an accident. 
uh, around about the 1st of July, actually, funnily enough. Um, that's funny. Uh, okay, so that's that. Um, right, well, I mean, that's, that looks... Oh, what's this? Okay, so two devices sending data. And that's the screen earlier on that we saw, which essentially showed us nothing at all. Um, licensing and costs. I have licensing, so that's good. No additional cost to speak of. Um, users. Okay. This all looks quite complex um, for the information that I've managed to get from this. And uh, okay. I mean, if, if I'm honest, this isn't as I expected it to be. Um, it's certainly not as good as it sounded when I introduced it at the start of that video um, earlier on in, in May. So uh, apologies for that. I think maybe I can just jump into endpoint analytics because I've done some work in endpoint analytics recently that really is pretty impressive compared to desktop analytics. And I, I think there's been there's been a lot of different variations on Windows Analytics, Desktop Analytics, and uh, Endpoint Analytics. Um, that really just confused the whole topic. But let's let's jump into Endpoint Analytics and see if that is any better than this. So I'm going to go into our Endpoint Manager Admin Center which should be at endpoint.microsoft.com. There it is. And then go into reports and then choose endpoint analytics. It's in this analytics section. So it's just here. And then I've not, I've not turned it on. So we'll see the whole, the whole process. Um, so this essentially will turn on endpoint analytics and you can collect it from all cloud managed devices Selected groups, or you can choose later. I'm going to go with all cloud managed devices and start that up. And this will take a little bit of time to collect the data. I'm wrong. It, that won't take a little bit of time to collect the data. That has already got all the data, even though I've not been using it and it hadn't activated it. It's been collecting the data. Um, and yeah, it's all there for us to enjoy right now. I was going to pad out a bit there for, for 24 hours while it um, collected the data, but I don't need to, so that's good. Okay, so endpoint analytics score is 19, and the baseline being um, 33. Baseline, I assume, is similar for the other baselines compared to other organizations in, of this size and scale. So that's not ideal, but it's, you know, there's some green there. That's good. Um, so on the insights and recommendations section on the right-hand side, we have... Um, you have two devices with slow sign-in times. On average, these devices sign in 150 seconds slower than your other devices. Now, I've only got a couple of devices, so I'm not sure. Maybe it doesn't work in this environment. How about I jump over to my customer environment and take a look at what they've got. I'll need to obviously blank out all the customer data, but let's take a look at what a real environment in production actually looks like. Okay, so here we are. We are in the Endpoint Analytics portal within Endpoint Manager, and hopefully you can't see the customer data here, but you can see the scores, the, the, the stuff that I want to talk about. So you can see this customer, I've worked really closely with to give them a, a really good experience for, for their end users. So they've got um, an, an 86 uh, as a score, which is good, and the start performance and recommended software is, is really high. Application reliability, um, is coming in just above average on, uh, at a 60, so that's not too bad. So those are some good information on the in the middle there. And then on the right-hand side, 88% of your Windows 10 devices are not registered with Windows Autopilot, so that's fine because they're not using Autopilot right now. They're in the process of moving over to Autopilot, so that, that makes perfect sense to me. So let's look at these reports then, and this it already has more information to me than um, desktop analytics did, so let's let's see how this goes. So startup performance. Uh, so for a startup score, you can see it's 85, which is apparently meeting goals and it's above the baseline. So the core boot score is 97. That's pretty good. Um, I assume I have 100. So uh, that is that is fantastic. Um, yeah, 100 is exceptional. And essentially, how fast does, this, does the 
does the device boot to the sign in screen? And then after that, how long does it take to sign in from um, from being allowed to sign in to the interactive desktop? So that's again pretty high for this customer. So that's great. Um, this customer actually doesn't have group policy on these devices, so we um, we don't measure that. They're uh, they're cloud only, so that's great. And uh, for the core boot, actually, it's not measured at all. Um, there is uh, maybe a couple of devices left that have um, group policy, but I thought we'd we'd moved off moved over from all of those, but got still got a zero there anyway. Um, so startup time. Yeah, so this is in seconds. This is the amount of time it takes in seconds to to get to the responsive desktop. And, you know, 30 seconds isn't bad. It's not even enough time to stand up and mind to go make a cup of tea like it, like you had with Windows 7. So that's that's great. Um, and then we've been trending along that that line for for the month at least, but for a good a good few months now, that's been how we've been going. It does say on the right hand side you've got four devices with hit, uh, with hard disk drives as opposed to solid state disks. So um, on average these boot 28 seconds slower and sign in 31 seconds slower than the SSD devices in the organization. So that's really good insights when you're looking at whether you need to upgrade your hardware. So per model performance we get to see the two different types of device they've got and a good understanding of how these devices are actually uh, booting and performing within the environment. Then on a per device basis you can see we've got the core boot time and, and all the information we need about these devices to see is there a device that has a, a core boot time that is that is unacceptable. So I'm going to choose that and then scroll to page 4. You can see there's a, 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 a pro book there with a hard disk drive that has a core boot time of 50 seconds which you know isn't isn't perfect uh, so they're looking really they're looking at about over a minute and a half for a sign in there which is a bit a bit pants compared to the rest of the environment we also have this restart frequency thing which I think is brilliant it shows you how often a device or devices in the environment restart and why so blue screen long power button press which is brilliant um, is it an update? Is it a restart? Is it a shutdown? Or is it just a, an unknown uh, reboot? So that already, as I say, is, is much more information that we got from desktop analytics. And this was just a click to enable. I didn't need to do anything else on this. I just clicked and there, there it was before I even uh, expected it to have collected any information. Um, proactive remediations. Uh, so this is some um, automatic remediations that we can put in place based on stuff that Microsoft has already produced for us. So updates, tail group policies and restart, stopped, click to run the service. I haven't really looked at those, so I'm not going to jump into those right now. But, you know, the proactive remediations are a load of good information on the on the web about those. Recommended software. Um, well, we can see that we've got Windows 10 on all of the devices. Yeah, I think it's suggesting that we shouldn't have Windows 7 or Windows 8 or whatever, but there we go. Um, they're all using cloud entities and cloud uh, cloud management, but only 12% have uh, Windows Autopilot. And then application reliability. So <laughs> Okay, so um, for six devices with OneDrive XE, um, it's got a pretty bad application reliability score because there's a mean time to failure of seven minutes uh, which is a pretty poor uh, metric there you, every seven minutes um, one driver apparently is 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 dying but there you go um, and it gives you a good idea of, of how your applications are performing do you need to fix a certain application do you need to take a look at some of these apps to fix to, to, to get these this reliability better from an app performance perspective, uh, we've also got the number of crashes per day, the, the amount of usage, the mean time to failure, and, and the reliability score. So, you know, people are using Calculator a lot. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't crash. It's really good. I like Calculator. Um, on the other hand, uh, 
office clicked your own has crashed 12 times in 14 days that's once that's once a day um and to be honest they're not even running it that much more than not that much more than calculator although i'm not sure when you would run the click to run client maybe an upgrade or something um winward however four crashes in 69 hours you know i think it's um it's good metrics and good information that you can use if you just look at it and, and see why is why is um word crashing so much uh, in 14 days and then in, in model performance we've got the same information uh, about the the devices and the app reliability on the models same with devices so we can we can tie up though we can correlate between devices types of device specific devices and applications that are crashing a lot so we can really understand if it's if it's word on HP Pro works, or is it Word on Pro Desk that we can we can work out if there's a problem there, and then similarly with versions of operating system, does um, does a certain operating system version cause crashes on more applications, and that's really good insights that you can use to decide whether you need to upgrade or downgrade, or maybe take a look at the application itself. So whilst this started out at a an idea of finishing off the desktop analytics video to give you a part two on, on what desktop analytics was. Really, I'm not at first about desktop analytics anymore. It didn't give me any insight that I was expecting it to. It was a real letdown. Endpoint analytics, however, that was brilliant. I think we've got a lot of insights there from stuff that I didn't even know we were collecting information on. And, and it's analyzed and it's presented in graph format that I can use and digest and make improvements to the organization based on that information. So apologies that this video was a little late, but yeah, if you've liked this video, if it's helped you out, please click the like button, hit subscribe, and we'll get new content to you as soon as we can. See you next time.